Um, Challenger Learning Center in Woodstock, Illinois has this one um, coming from the Foundations Montessori School in Algonquin, Illinois. Teacher there is um, Sue Baroni. And um, Sergio asked this. Uh, uh, actually, he says, was it hard to climb Mount Everest? You haven't done that yet. Well, I, we'll save that one for you. Um, and here we go. Um, Alexa, where do you sleep? There's no hotels up there. Take it, Keith. Well, this is very simple. I'm just going to pan the computer here, and you can see our little city. Um, we sleep in we sleep in tents. Nice and steady. And inside those tents, yeah. we sleep in very, very thick sleeping bags. Very thick. And indeed. we're sleeping atop a glacier, which yeah. is constantly moving. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, here's an avalanche right now. Whoa. You see it? Wow. Don't know if you can see it, but there's an avalanche. Yep, we can. Just hold it steady there for a minute. Now, wait a minute. When you get an avalanche, are you guys in any danger there? No, we aren't in danger here, but uh, you know they sometimes do cross our path, and that's uh, that's why we like to move very quickly through certain areas of the of the route. Wow. Now, however, there was a very significant avalanche several days ago, which is on our website, and it covered the entire ice fall. And then last night, I guess Scott slept through it, but there was a real nasty one behind us here. A lot of rocks came down. And of course, we're living at a glacier, which is, you know, these rocks are on top of the glacier, and it's constantly moving. So uh, we've been walking around, and all of a sudden, rocks just fall over. So it's a very dynamic environment. And although it's not necessarily dangerous, it's not really safe either. You just have to keep your eyes out here. So even sleeping in your tent at night, you're under a little bit of uh, uh, concern about something might happen to you in the middle of the night. So you always have to be alert, even when you're asleep. So it's not dangerous, but it's not safe. You guys figure that out. All right. Now, um, Foster wants to know, what food did you pick? <laughs> well, uh, we, we introduced you to, to uh, Kaji uh, just a moment ago. We, uh, we have uh, mostly Western food. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to bring um, fresh fruit and, and certain types of foods up here because it it typically comes up either uh, on the back of a porter or a yak, which is a, um, a large animal, kind of like a cow with, with horns. They're very strong animals. But uh, it's a tough ride, uh, a long way away from Kathmandu, the capital. So we have a lot of potatoes, which are hearty, and cauliflower. We have yak meat, uh, spaghetti noodles, and, and things like that, um, cheeses. Uh, up higher, uh, we, uh, we take foods that are kind of like uh, camping food, dehydrated uh, foods, uh, power bars, um, uh, military meals ready to eat. So simple things that you can heat up very quickly and uh, you know, get a lot of calories from them. All right. Uh, let me go back to my questions now. Um, I, I know every kid right now is wondering what yak meat tastes like. we got to get that out of the way. Is it just like chicken? It doesn't taste like chicken. No, it does not. It tastes like beef. A little bit chewier and stringier. Yeah. Kind of like uh, maybe uh, uh, an old shoe leather. Ah, excellent. <laughs> That's yummy. All tastes right, good, so, though. Um, how do you get water? Okay, well, there's a, uh, there's a lot of water around here. It's in the form of snow and ice. However, one of the things we have to be careful of here is sanitation. And uh, usually what happens is I don't think we can move the computer completely, but there's these little ponds of water in the middle of the glacier. And there's one just over here where uh, our Sherpa cooks go down and grab the buckets of water, they bring it up, and they boil it. Because there's a lot of people around here, and the sanitation isn't exactly perfect, so you have to be careful of organisms you know, getting into the water. But, uh, oh, no, we got another avalanche. It's just life is normal here. You just turn around, there's another avalanche. Uh, but you have to be very careful of the water here because of, you know, animals and, and humans and human waste and so forth. But uh, there's a lot of it around here. And then up higher in the mountain, what we'll do is we'll actually collect uh, uh, clean snow and uh, just uh, uh, boil it up in a pot. Uh, and it takes, it's actually fairly labor intensive. You know, light snow, you c it can take several buckets worth just to fill up uh, an algae bottles worth of of water. So 
you know, as soon as you get to a new camp, you start melting the snow because you, you need it for your meals and, and for the next day's uh, climb. All right, let's move to the McKinley Middle School, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. The teacher there is Barb Rame. And um, uh, Oliver would like to know, what's the scariest thing you have done, ever, ever done? <laughs> well, um, I guess uh, it would, for me, it would be a, a rock climb. Uh, I was in Colorado, and uh, I was climbing with a good friend of mine. I climbed with him uh, for quite a number of years. And he said, oh, why don't you go ahead and lead this, uh, this pitch? That, that means one, one rope length of uh, a rock climb. And I'd been in this area before, and I'd seen it, and it didn't look that difficult. Uh, and so I started climbing it, and I noticed that uh, there weren't really any places for me to put in any protection. Those, that means uh, a piece of gear that would uh, prevent me from hitting the ground if I were to fall. So... It wasn't possible for me to, to backtrack any, so I inched up a little bit further and a little bit further, and I found myself about 40 feet up, and I still didn't have a single piece of protection in, and uh, I yelled down to my friend John, hey, what is this rated? And he said, well, it's a 510X, <laughs> and uh, X means uh, uh, if, if you fall, you die, basically. It's a, a, it means run out. It means this is really scary, and I, I should have been climbing it via a top rope, which means you set up a, a belay station up top and you, and you have someone kind of on a pulley that can, if you were to fall, catch you. Well, my, uh, my legs started to tremble. We call it sewing machine legs. Yeah. And I, my palms got all sweaty. And I realized I couldn't go left. I couldn't go right. I couldn't go down. There's only one way, which was to go up. And, uh, and so I, I captured my wits and I just did it. And then I really laid into my buddy John after I, I finished that, that uh, particular bet. climb. Not, not a well, good friend. This That's sounds familiar because I have a similar story. It was in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, well, I have a similar story in Colorado. It was also rock climbing. And I was about 500 feet up, and a thunderstorm was coming in. And couldn't go down, couldn't go left, couldn't go right, so that you know, had to go up. But in my case, I'm a little shorter than Scott. So he probably could have reached where I had to go, but I had to jump. So I had a rope that if I fell, I would have gone like 20 or 30 feet. And as the lightning crashed around me, I said, well, you know, I just got to do this. I jumped up, got the thing, and pulled myself up. And um, I didn't yell at my friend because my friend was congratulating me on being such a great rock climber. But I, was, I had sewing machine leg. I had the trembly fingers. So uh, it gives you pause to think about things. But Yeah, I bet. I bet. Um, okay. Uh Cassiopeia has a great question. When looking down, uh, is the height of the mountain not as cool for you, Scott, since you've been to space? Uh, I love your name, by the way. That's a yeah. great uh, astronomical name. It Cassiopeia. is. Yeah. Um, actually, um, yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful name. Uh, I've looked down upon Mount Everest from space, and it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. But I can also tell you that standing upon uh, these ridges up here, and I can only imagine what it'll feel like to stand on the summit of Everest, uh, it, it's a totally different uh, sense of, uh, of nature, and, uh, and uh, I'm sure the, the sense of awe and beauty will, uh, will be very similar uh, to that of, of being in space. Um, okay, and, um, oh, by the way, can you see the Great Wall of China from space? Well, with uh, telephoto lenses and binoculars, yes, you can. You can see uh, the pyramids of Egypt. You can see runways, uh, lots of man-made objects. But with your naked eye, you cannot. It's, uh, it's just too, uh, too tiny a detail. And that came from Jacob, by the way. 